Hey, what's going on, my friends? Welcome back to a brand new series. This is L.A. Noir, one of my most favorite games of 2011. Now, without further ado, let's just jump right into the action. A city on the verge of greatness. A new type of city, based not on the man, but on the automobile, the car. A symbol of freedom and vitality. Where every man can own his own home and have room to breathe and not be overlooked by his neighbors. A city where a man's home is his castle. A quarter acre of the dream made possible by victory. City of Opportunists. The City of Dreams, where Hollywood will shape the thoughts and desires of the entire planet. The City of Pioneers. City of Dreamers. A city of undercurrents, where not everything is as it seems. A 20th century city that will become a model for the world. A city that has no boundaries, that will stretch as far as the eye can see. Okay then. In the Marine Corps, you deal with the chain of command. Mistakes get made, but you deal with them. You know what you're fighting for and that you're on the same team. But dealing with corruption is like chasing shadows. You never know whether the guy you're talking to is on the pad, or whether it's your partner, or maybe even the watch commander. So who do you trust, Cole? I made up my mind a long time ago. KGPL calling car, 14 Adam. 14 Adam, come in. Go ahead, KGPL. 14 Adam, see the detective an ambulance shooting at 6th and Industrial Street. Get a 16 William request uniform assistance for an evidence search. 14 Adam, code 2. Roger. Fourteen Adam en route. Here we go again. They don't request uniforms for an evidence search unless there's some kind of catch. Ever the optimist. From the beam of sunshine himself. Okay, let's drive up to the destination. Floyd Rose, homicide. You might back up? Yes, sir. Phelps and Dunn, Wilshire Division. We had a shooting took place down this alleyway. We have the Vic, Scooter Payton, a Negro male bagged up and on his way to Central Morgue. Witness says a tall white guy, our shooter, put two in the Vic's head and then threw his piece. I need you guys to try and recover the gat. You want us to look anywhere in particular? Give it your best shot, guys. The dead guy's a low light. I'm not expecting any miracles here. And if we recover the weapon? Bag it and return it to technical services. You hurry it up, Floyd. We I'm got out of here. To be. Happy hunting. This is a fist hump. Just going through the motions. You're probably right. Let's just get it over and done. All right, have it your way. We'll search right up to the back wall. If you still don't come up with anything, come find me and we'll talk it out. Two heads are always better than one. Well, anyway, I struggled to get this game 
to start. Basically, look at this, oh, this over here. Basically, uh, I had to do a bunch of things like run Steam as an administrator. I had to switch to DirectX version of, from DirectX it's not my 9 job to, to direct, pick through other people's trash to DirectX uh, 11 just to get the game to work. Dr. Fontaine, could I have a word? Of course, young man. I really enjoyed your lecture, Doctor. Psychiatry seems to have a tremendous amount to offer. Why, thank you. I'm always happy to receive acknowledgement for my work. The mind is the last great mystery in medicine. Are you thinking of specializing, Mr... Sheldon, or Courtney Sheldon. I'm only in second year, Doctor. They fast-tracked me a year because of my experience during the war. Ah. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Battle fatigue and collapse under duress. Can it be helped? I would say yes, given the right set of circumstances. Trauma forces the mind to close down, retreat in on itself. We try to find ways to unlock the mind again through a combination of therapy and drug treatment. Hypnosis and therapy are powerful tools in the right hand. Chill. I've been to visit some of the guys at the VA hospital. A good friend of mine, he's so far away. It's like he's wandering You on. went through a lot together. Yes, Doctor. Give me his details and I'll make a prognosis. I have a number of clinics in Los Angeles, Courtney Sheldon. And your penance, or your friend's help, is to come and work at one of them in your spare time what little spare time a medical student has. Is that a deal? Is it ever? I, I can't thank you enough. I'm not promising a cure, Courtney. I want you to remember that. Every physician has patients that he cannot hope to cure, for whom he can only smooth the path to death. Anything? Yeah, so basically this uh this game has uh newspapers that you can collect that like show stories behind feet. stuff. I always get landed with this crap. Jesus. Cole, come take a look at this. Shooter put him up against the wall and blew his brains out. Hell of a way to go. Doesn't really matter how you go once you're gone. <laughs> Don't get all deep on me, Phelps. Ralph, there's something on the rooftop. How the hell did you see that? A reflection in the window. Looks like it might be our weapon. I'm gonna see if I can find a way up there. All right. Don't hurt yourself. My buddy Ralph here just seems to want to complain about everything. The gun's up on the roof, right? So we need to find a way up. Yeah, no shit. Anyways, this game came out, I think, yeah, around 2011. Which was hard to believe it now, but it was 10 years what ago. What kind of chumps do these homicide guys think we are? Smith & Wesson, serial S71893. Two rounds fired, and instead of dropping it down a drain, our shooter hoists it up here. Interesting guy. It was, I was, I was 15... We follow up on this now, before the perp tries to leave town. I was 15 years old, and I think I was in my, uh, right there at the back end of my freshman year of high school when this game cold. came out. Let's take it back to Central. We could get a commendation. We could show some initiative, Ralph, and see if we can come up with an owner. That's a long shot, Cole. It's a pretty fancy gun. You know a local gun store? Sure. There's a place a couple of blocks from here. Are you sure about this? It's not really our gig. No harm in doing some digging. 
The suits didn't seem to give much of a damn. Such a little Boy Scout, Cole. You can't wait to get out of that uniform, can you? You'd rather round up drunks and help old ladies across the road? I'd rather get through the day without the captain's foot up my ass. It'll be fine, Ralph. You worry too much. Exactly what I was gonna say. Ralph here's a little bitch. Now let's get into our police car. I remember when this game came out, I think the 360 version had three discs. Because the game was, I guess, so huge that they had to put it on three discs. Oh, locations. Current destination. Oh, yeah. I already set it up. Okay. Sadly, in this game, I, I think it has something to do with the, like, the realistic facial animations, but you can't run this game at 60 FPS. You can only run it at 30, which is terrible. Also, textures, as you can see, have trouble loading in. But this game more than makes up for it, in my opinion, with its uh, excellent storytelling. Basically, to me, it plays almost like an uh, interactive movie. And I don't know uh, what it is about this game, but uh, for some reason, I just want to obey the traffic laws. At least when I'm normally playing, you know, by myself. But for the sake of this playthrough, I'll either let my partner drive or I will, uh, or I will drive there myself. on our destination here. Officers Phelps and Dunn. Can you tell us anything about this gun? Smith & Wesson, Model 27 registered Magnum. Chambered for 357, nickel plated with pearl grips. Same gun used by General Patton. <laughs> You're not suggesting he's the owner? No, I'm not. You seem to know a lot about the weapon. I ought to. I sold it. You know, this piece will stop a rhino. These babies are only available special order. Here's my Smith & Wesson order book. You mind if I take a look? Be my guest. This is about something bad, right? Model 27 with pearl grips, Cole. You see it on there? See. Seven barrel polished, nickel plated, pearl grip, Schroeder. Okay. We're in luck. Errol Schroeder, 203 South Glass Street. Ordered the gun in February 46. Thanks, you've been a big help. Anytime. Always happy to help out the LAPD. I remember when this game came out, like, I thought it was so revolutionary for its time. Let's see if he's at home. Owning the gun doesn't prove he pulled the trigger. Okay. In for a penny, in for a pound. Lead the way, Gunga Den. And to me, in a lot of ways, it kind of still is. Yeah, the Toro, I know how to play the game.
that wasn't so hard, was it? Just because we're in uniform doesn't mean we can't use our initiative. I guess so. Seems a little too good to be true. One of a kind murder weapon bought locally using the real name? If Schroeder's our shooter, he's no criminal mastermind. Most of them aren't. That's why they get caught. And two out of every three crimes are done on impulse. Another fact from the Phelps Encyclopedia of Thin Air. We really are full of Take a little shortcut through this alleyway. A lot. Uh, uh, this game kind of also makes me want to uh, like go to Los Angeles just to see how a lot of the locations that are in the game changed over the past seventy years. Because uh, from what I know, that th when they made this game, that they used uh, aerial photos of the time period plus uh, photographs to recreate it as realistically as possible. Some areas. Like yeah, they did get wrong, or some landmarks are in different, uh, are in the wrong place. But for the most part, it I think it's probably like maybe ninety percent accurate. Also, I might take a look into uh, stuff about the textures in this game because it kind of get kind of it will sickening to look at the textures failing to load in as they should Schroeder apartment 2 I might also I mean I'm not really sure I will but I might uh I might do the VR case files in a playthrough as well What do you guys want I'm officer Cole Phelps this is officer Dunn Wilshire Division. You're the owner of a Smith & Wesson Model 27, nickel-plated with pearl grips? I might be. What of it? Then you'll be surprised to know that Scooter Payton was murdered tonight with your gun. You're out of your mind. Scooter, he works for me. I have that gun here in my drawer. What the fuck is going on here? You're under arrest, Schroeder. Cuff him, Ralph. No way. You're not taking me down for this. By the way, that punch Very looks bad. so avoidable. Come on, boy. I was in the war. Damn. Ralph, you all right? I'm fine. I hardly felt it. He's lucky he caught me off guard. Keep an eye also, on Ralph. I'm going to take a look around. Also, what kind of dumbass, honestly takes a shot at a cop like that, like, uh, like, even if you know you're innocent of what you did, I do not understand why some guys just feel the need to, like, play, put their hands on a cop. Like, they know it's just going to be a lot, Floyd but they Rose's can't. Floyd name is in this book. Phelps, we can come out of this all bright and shiny with a commendation, or stick our schlongs in a hornet's nest. Call it in, partner. And leave the book where you found it. Officer Phelps, that's 1247. It's, it's like, even if you're innocent of the crime that you committed, you still committed a crime simply by hitting a cop. Excuse me, Sergeant, but... Excuse me? Fuck you! You say another word and I'll break your fucking head and have you in the brig. Some of us are here for... I know why you're here, asswipe. I'm having a bad day, Private. Some people don't seem to want to get on this bus. I didn't ask for your help. He didn't ask for your help. Can you believe this guy? 
Who are you two? Abbott and Costello? We're here for OCS, Sergeant. So it's the three fucking stooges and you're here for OCS. God help this fucking country in the USMC. The Japanese will do the world a favor and kill you quickly. All three of you are on report. What are your fucking names? Phelps. Kelso. Merrill. Any other gentlemen for OCS? OCS is at Elliot. You take the Camp Elliot bus over there. This bus is for MCRD. This bus is for men who want to fight. What an asshole. You dumb fucking sons of bitches. Well, you picked the right place, Cole. A city that needed an honest cop like a thirsty man needed water. You'd heard the stories, but you weren't interested. You were here to fight the good fight, solve cases, right wrongs. But the force is like politics. There's no sitting on the fence. You have to choose sides. A brown paper envelope or a Greyhound ticket to Palookaville. They could only ever end. All units at 211 in progress and shots fired at Westlake Savings and Loan. 1415 West 3rd Street. Unit to handle identified code 3. We'll take that. It's only a couple blocks from 14 here. 14 Adam calling KGPL. We'll handle the 211. Roger that, 14 Adam. Be advised suspects are armed and dangerous. Roger, KGPL. 14 Adam on route. I sincerely hope that sm- Whoa. Okay, I did not mean to take a screenshot. My controller just, uh, just stopped on me for there for a second. Anyways, I sincerely hope that that small glimpse of uh, music that we heard on the radio doesn't get me copyrighted because I do not like that to happen. Take it quick, you guys. The cops are here. We gotta move it. Give me a shotgun. Oh, come on. You're the one hanging back. I'm the one getting shot at. If anyone's getting hammered, it's me. Stay in cover. That's it? We got them all? I think we got them, Cole. Should be all clear. Lieutenant Hopkins says anytime you reach for the shotguns, you're either going to end up dead or wearing a citation. So I guess it's okay, Ralph. You did well in there. I'm glad you had my back. Man couldn't ask for a better partner. This kind of opportunity comes along once in a lifetime, Hank. <laughs> I have to grasp it. You have to survive it first, Cole. You are the veterans. The Japs love to shoot officers. If I can make a name for myself in this war, my future... Thinking of taking on a company of the Emperor's finest single-handed? You don't seem the Sergeant York type to me. When I need your opinion, Kelso, I'll ask for it. They talk about officers like you in boot camp, Cole. They call it the Custer Syndrome. Guys who go around dreaming of fame and glory and getting all of their men killed in the process. Our duty is to lead, Kelso. And their duty is to die for your wonderful future? He's got a point there. Cole Phelps and Jack Kelso. 
With some people, it's as simple as chemistry. Two guys who should have been friends, but their personalities got in the way. Phelps, a good guy, who wound way too tight. And Kelso, a quiet man who could never walk away from a fight. Well, it's a shame you don't like to talk about it, Cole. Ralph, friends who want to stay friends don't discuss religion or politics. In my case, you can add the war to that. I know that bomb. Wendell Bauer. I put him away before he jumped parole. Get after him, Phelps. I'll head him off in the car. Wendell Bauer, stop! LNCD! You can go screw yourself. Why, you watch it! He's hiding in the alley! Power! Hold it right there! Stop now or I will shoot! I won't tell you again, Wendell. You don't want to do this, Wendell. Get down from there right now! <laughs> Give it up, Wendell! Stay the hell away from Seriously, who is this physically fit to climb up? It, my thoughts exactly. Like, who is this physically fit to climb up the side of a freaking wall with a pole? Let alone be park parkouring across the rooftops. You assholes already screwed me once. Give it up, Bowers. There's nowhere left to go. Looks like we've got the place to ourselves. Damn. What are you doing, Wendell? Your parole officer's feeling lonely. He's got a hole in his life for an asshole like you. You can make it up to him in ten years' time. Watch your head. This hump will be back in the Iron Hotel by tomorrow night. Nice work, Cole. You run track in high school? Part of the tradition of the Marine Corps and being an officer in the Marine Corps is the ability to make tough decisions. The right decision is not always the popular one. The right decision will get the men you care about killed. These ratings and your ability to give them frankly and truthfully directly affect your chances of successfully becoming a Marine officer. Candidate Phelps, you have the floor. Esprit de Corps, Merrill, 10. Franklin, 8. Weiss, 8. Donahoe, 6. Kowalski, 6. Hudson, 5. Kelso, 2. Leadership, Donahoe, 8. Franklin, 7. Merrill, 6. Kowalski, 6. Weiss, 5. Hudson, 5. Kelso, one. Candidate Kelso. I'm sorry, Captain, but I joined the Marine Corps to fight the enemy, not get involved in this schoolboy chicken shit. Kelso, in my office, now! For every cop, there's the case that makes you. Gives you that leg up, gets you recognized as the shining new star in the squad. The case that you solve that shows that you have the gumption, the gung-ho, the get-up-and-go to make you stand out from your average rank-and-file patrolman. But this could be the one goal. LAPD, could you stand clear of the body, please? Has anyone called an ambulance? We've called an ambulance and the police, but I'm afraid he's dead. Okay, stand further back and move along. It's your choice, but make it quick, people. Hey, Cole. You got here quick. My beat crosses 7th Street. Okay. You're first reporting, then. We'll get a perimeter going and move the crowd on. You better see what you can find out before the homicide dicks show up. I'll be with you in a moment. I swear, this town is going straight. Everybody stay town. back. Let us do our job. Broad daylight. Crowded street. 
Now I've seen everything. Yeah, nowadays that's almost commonplace. C. Galetta. Layway receipt. Pearl earrings. Made out to Bank of Arcadia. Okay. FN Browning. Serial number 01138. I need to run it by a gun store. Eagleson's gun store's a couple blocks from here. Hey, I think we have to talk to this guy. Keep talking. Someday you'll say something. Sir, I'm Officer Phelps. What exactly did you see? I heard the shots. I thought it was a car backfiring. Uh, I saw a girl run at the shoe store. You want to take a look around now? The witness can wait, Cole. We've got the perimeter. All right. Let's go in here and interrogate this lady. Uh, can, I, can I help you, sir? I'm Officer Phelps, miss. I'm here about the shooting. Did you know the victim? He was my boss, Mr. Gage. Mr. Gage's first name? Everett. And you are? Galleta. Clovis Galleta. Yeah, I know how to interview people. You think you could tell me exactly what happened, miss? I look around the shops at lunch. I was in a store when Mr. Gage, my boss, bursts in yelling that I'm late on my lunch. And? We came back. I was angry. I walked in front. I heard shots. I turned and saw Mr. Gage fall. Communist. You know what happened and why. You're going to tell me. There's nothing to tell. I've done nothing wrong. How can you prove different? Layaway voucher, Bank of Arcadia to see Galetta. Your pearl earrings, Miss Galetta. You've been paying for them for a whole year. Stop lying. And tell me what happened at the jewelry store. Oh, God. I won't lose the earrings, will I? You could lose your freedom, you little fool, if you don't stop obstructing a murder investigation. Mr. Kalu. Edgar Kalu. He runs the jewelry store. He's showing me a lovely watch. Mr. Gage bursts in. Mr. Kalu gets very angry with Mr. Gage, and they start yelling at each other. Mr. Gage tells me that all of the things in the store are junk nickel-plated, made in Japan, and yells at me to get back to work. Then what happened? We get back here, and I hear a loud bang. Mr. Gage clutches at his back. I hear another bang, and another, and another. <laughs> Mr. Gage falls to his knees. It looks very painful. <laughs> God, I hope I don't get copyrighted for that. Which jewelry store? Hartfields. Broadway, between 5th and 6th. Did you see the person who shot Mr. Gage? Of course I did. Mr. Callow looked very angry. He kept firing the gun. He kept pulling the trigger. He threw the gun in a bin and turned and walked away. Okay, let me doubt so I can... So this Kalu character put five rounds in the back of Mr. Gage because he badmouthed his products? Yes, something like that. How many shots did you hear, Miss Galetta? It's difficult to remember. It 
sounded like there were so many, and they were so loud. Okay, I know she's telling the truth. I didn't mean to press truth before. I need you to concentrate, Miss Galetta. Even minor details can become important later on. Well, there was one bang. And then another. And then three very quickly close together. Five. Thank you for your help, ma'am. You've been very brave. We'll need you to make a formal statement about what happened to Mr. Cage. Does that mean I can still collect my... my... Never mind. Yes, officer, I'll make a statement. She's limited your jewelry. A man is dead and that's all you're worried about. We have the murder weapon. And the murderer. The girl saw it all. Our killer works at a jewelry store called Hartfield. That's a couple of blocks from here. Thinking what I'm thinking. Tate, maintain the perimeter. Let's get into our car and bust this Kalu fella. I have no awareness of freaking your surroundings, good sir. It's not like you'll get run over by a car. Not that I am the best driver in the world, I'm, I'm terrible. Okay. Officer, can I interest you in a new watch? Officer Cole Phelps, are you Edgar Kalu? Uh, no. Uh, Mr. Kalu is out back. He said he'd lie down. I'll buzz him for you. Son of a bitch! Go, Cole, go! Hurry, officer! He's got no way! Kalu! Get back here! Lock him up and throw away the key! LAPD motherfucker. you awake at night the case that gnaws at your guts and ruins your marriage the case that keeps you propping up a bar as you relive the what-ifs the might have beens the half leads and the half truths the case that other cops murmur about whenever you walk past the case you never ever discuss God's mill may grind slowly but it grinds finely son I hear it's you who knocked our malefactor from the shooting yesterday yes sir then tell me, Boyle, I hear you're quite the climber, a man of initiative. How would you like a chance at smiting this man with the sword of justice? You're asking me to, to conduct the interview, sir? I am, young Phelps. You've only been with us a short time, and you've assembled yourself a stellar arrest record. Not to mention the fine work you did in the war, sending heathens back to the hell they came from. But I'm curious as to whether you can turn your hand to interrogation takes a certain animal cunning lad. Do you think you might be ready for that? 
Yes, sir. I think I am. Good man. You need many things for a conviction, young Phelps. A motive, opportunity, hard evidence, and best of all, a confession. If you fail in the former, you can always use a modicum of violence to obtain the latter. How are you feeling, lad? Fine, sir. Very good. The evidence is overwhelming. May the cat eat him and the cat be eaten by the devil. Bring me a confession, young Phelps. This is your chance. Don't fail me. Has my lawyer arrived yet? I want to see my lawyer. A lawyer can't help you, Mr. Kalu. You shot a man dead in cold blood. You're going to have to pay for that. You followed Everett Gage and the girl back to the shoe store. You put five rounds in Gage's back. Gage was a, was a bastard. Whatever he got, he got what was coming. But it had nothing to do with me. You lying sack of shit. Look at him. Fucking scanning the room. Blinking multiple times. You shot Gage, and we know why. We can put you at the scene. You can't prove anything. We know all about the argument. Miss Galetta made a statement. You're, you're counting on the girl? You think her testimony is going to stand up in court? You're going to the gas chamber, Edgar. That Jew-hating fuck couldn't leave me alone. I had a sale. That girl was ready to buy. That's not exactly uh, politically correct to yell at a Jew saying he's going to the gas chamber. Let's change the subject. You fasting for Yom Kippur, Mr. Kalu? Yeah, let's change the subject, you going motherfucker. How about baseball? You're not denying you're a Jew, Mr. Kalu. This is America. It's not Germany. It's not a crime. Some people don't like Jews, Mr. Kalu. Yeah, and I guess you're one of them. Gage hated Jews, didn't he, Mr. Kalu? I don't know what you're talking about. You left-wing leaning parasite. You expect me to sit here and listen to your drivel? You call me that? You sit there and you call me those names, you goddamn goy butt snatcher. You and that stup Gage. Why did you do it, Mr. Kalu? Gage. He's in the Chamber of Commerce. He's in with all those momsers. He blocked every proposal I ever put forward. Kike this and kike that. He's been trying to ruin my business for years. Edgar Kalu, I'm charging you with the first degree murder of Everett Gage. I respect your beliefs and your right to hold them. I hope for your sake jury can commute to murder in the second degree. May God have mercy on you, sir. Masterfully done, Officer Phelps. It is just Officer Phelps, isn't it, lad? Yes, sir. Then let me have a word with the chief of police, young Phelps. The department needs heroes. A shining, honest face the public can admire. I applaud a man with your talent for unwavering justice. Back to your duties for now, Boyle. But here's a piece of advice. Get yourself two suits, get them pressed. You'll be needing them. Here's your new desk, kid. You're on traffic. The hot sheet is posted here, next to the map. What's his problem? That's Biggs. He's an institution. So this is what all the fuss is about. Why couldn't they build a freeway that goes past my place? They haven't even approved the money yet, kid. The bond issue won't be till December. It'll be years before any of this will happen. <laughs> 
Here's your new partner, Stefan Burkowski. I've heard all about you, Phelps. You go easy on me and let me earn the odd citation, and maybe we'll get along fine. I'm here to learn, detective. <laughs> oh, he's an intense one, isn't he, Mel? He's intense. The newly minted detective here, Cole Phelps. Hi, Phelps. I'll be keeping an eye on you. I could spend a little time basking in reflected glory, make a change from busting hookers and dope fiends. Who was that, Commander? Roy Earl, chief detective and advice. Do they all dress like movie stars? Well, Roy is a movie star. And the whole of the seedy side of L.A. is his audience. <laughs> so what is that supposed to mean? Stick with me, kid. You'll find out. Now some housekeeping. Warm Central Division welcome for Detective Cole Phelps. Some of you guys may know Phelps. He's the cop who broke the jewelry store murder. Stand up and take a bow, Phelps. If it's all right with That's you, sir. That's an order, Phelps. Ooh. Shh, shh, quiet, everybody. <laughs> Phelps is one of only two serving LAPD officers who received the Silver Star during the war. Really gave it those lousy Japanese, eh, Phelps? Uh, I did my best, Captain. Why are you war heroes always so modest? I've partnered Phelps with everybody's favorite pole, Stefan Bukowski. <laughs> Hope you like work, kid. Bukowski sure as hell doesn't. Well, that's why we have partners, right? <laughs> okay, okay, can it, guys. Stick with Bukowski. He's a good cop. He knows traffic inside now. I'm going to start you out with one case. You do okay, I'll give you a couple more. You screw up. You'll be rousting vagrants and running license plates. Now get down to the P.E. Freight Depot, 6th and Alameda. A patrolman called in a suspicious vehicle. Signs of foul play. See what you can find out. Come on, Phelps. Well, guys, I'm going to leave the video here. Please share a like, favorite, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know how you're enjoying the series. Hit that bell notification so I'm you'll know any time that I post. Quick, didn't they? Six years on patrol before I got this desk. You were here in five minutes. And I'll see all of you, you on the next video.